over here. You can just look like this and talk. All right. At this time, we'll call a regular meeting of the New Alm City Council for August 21st, 2018, 4.30 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is your consent agenda items. What's your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve those. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Item number 2A, conduct a public hearing to consider a request from Green Mill Best Western Plus 2101 South Broadway for a noise variance to allow a live <coughs> band to perform in a parking lot during Rockfest, Oktoberfest, and outside the event during the weekend of Oktoberfest, which uh, they got them down here. It's Friday, October 5th from 5.30 to 11.30 from Saturday, October 6th from 4 to 11.30, Friday, October 12th from 7.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m., and again on Saturday, October 13th from 4 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Public hearing. Anybody want to be heard? Nobody wants to be heard? Entertain a motion. Offer a resolution. I'll offer a resolution and waive a reading, close the public hearing, authorize the noise variance to permit amplified music in the parking lot adjacent to Green Mill and Bus Western Plus. Second. We got a motion to second, er, offer a resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? I'd like to just add, you know, it's my ward in Cottonwood Street. I did have one written uh, response to it uh, with a couple other things, and they said that uh, they could hear the music late into the evening and uh, just right through their house walls and uh, you know they said that they called the green mill to turn it down they, and nobody turned it down uh, it's just I know we send out notices to 350 feet you know, 500 or 500 feet so it it does amplify quite a bit and I know in the past we've else I didn't receive any of this last year but the year before we received some for down to front street valley street i know and german street but so it's just we a didn't get any anything in writing this time around right well this individual asked me if we and they said that they had contacted the police department last year and that the police department doesn't have a decimal reader to you know about the decimal you know we have a mm -hmm. you know about a volume i don't know if that's something we want to put in some sort of conditions for you know i know we're allowing outdoor music in a venue, but uh, it does affect some people's <coughs> sleep. So I'm, I'm just, you know, bringing it up for discussion that they asked me about decimals and uh, the loudness of the music. Yeah, I think in response to the decibels, one should keep in mind that by granting a variance to the noise regulations, you're basically saying, play on. Have at it. Yeah. Uh, so even if the police had a decibel meter, uh, there would have been no limit, you know, uh, that they could point <coughs> to in any <coughs> code. So I guess, it, you know, it, we did have some comments, I think, the first year that this was put on by the neighbors across the street. I mean, they were really close to the band, and, and uh, we I don't think we've had any comments from those individuals I think those Since folks then. now stay at a very nice Best Western in other cities that during that be. event. <laughs> might be. <laughs> I, I did drive by, uh, I think it was last year, and uh, that house did have, have lights on and stuff, right. so I, 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 was, I was assuming somebody was in there. But the, the, I guess the point is, for the variance, it actually allows that, that inconvenience yeah. for mm -hmm. a time period. All right, more discussion? Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Item 2B, conduct a public hearing on a petition for improvements on the alley of block 136 north of Center Street. Public hearing, anybody like to be heard? And none. I'll offer the motion to um, waive the reading and close the public hearing and approve the, the alley specifications on Block 136 North of Center. Second. 
We have a motion and a second off the resolution to waive the reading. <coughs> Any more discussion? I think I saw, did I see somebody say they wanted to talk? Do you want to come up speak? If you have anything you want to say. No. Did you want to speak about that alley at all? No? Okay. We'd like to see it. See it done? To be taken care of, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're in favor of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Great. 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 Okay. Okay. So okay. Thank you. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Any more? Discussion. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you can finish this up. Okay. Motion carries. Go ahead, Brad. <laughs> uh, anybody who might have just slipped in from the Green Mill, we've already approved your variance. <laughs> so you don't need to sit for the rest of the okay, meeting. It's you. done. <laughs> <laughs> we could make you say, and then you, could, tell them you can if you want to. But <laughs> we're fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, now I better go back. I almost skipped the next one here. Item three A: Consider a motion approving issuance of a lawful gambling permit for the Sioux Trails Ducks Unlimited chapter to conduct raffles gambling at the New Orleans Country Club, and I believe that's for January twenty fifth. 2019. I'll move it. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Balls no. <coughs> motion carries. Item 3B. Consider a motion approving the issuance of a liquor permit for the Herman Monument Society on September 8, 2018. Motion I'll to approve. Go ahead. I offer the motion to approve. <laughs> second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 As part of that process, the uh, consulting engineer was to look at the uh, <coughs> warrants for a all-way or four-way stop control at those intersections and otherwise uh, offer some uh, suggestions, recommendations on how to improve the uh, traffic flow and de delay and pedestrian crossing uh, safety at those locations. The report was... Uh, was uh, finished and presented to the Safety Commission a couple of meetings ago. They took a month or so to digest it and they came back with a recommendation that basically was the same as the consulting engineer and that was to build, construct many roundabouts at Oak Street and Center Street on North Highland with uh, Oak Street being the uh, preferred uh, alternate at this time or the uh, location where that would make the most uh, sense at sense or the most uh, mm -hmm. the best configuration for that intersection there's been a lot of uh, a.m. Uh, morning and evening or afternoon delay and congestion at that intersection because of the new high school at that location and so that was one of the reasons that uh, a roundabout was suggested or recommended I've come up with a cost estimate. The consultant has estimated kind of a bare bones cost estimate of 150 per intersection. I've discussed this with many city engineers, and I just feel that's extremely low, and probably should be at least be doubled, out of 300,000. And then also we're going to have to do uh, get a consulting design engineer for this specialized uh, design. So that I've estimated about 40,000 for that. The, the final report was distributed via email. There's also the presentation is available on YouTube. If any of the counselors wants additional information with regard to that, we could get it to them as well. So that's a recommendation. They'd like to see something done at, uh, at least Oak Street as soon as possible or in the near future. <coughs> and then also Center Street is uh, kind of out there in the future. I don't know if any, have any, anybody have any questions. Yes, Steve. A uh, question on, uh, it said many roundabouts provide safer pedestrian movement. 
I've went around many roundabouts so far in my life, and I've never seen a pedestrian cross one. <laughs> Where did it cross? <laughs> They're actually, Mr. President, they're actually drawn back from the, uh, and it's not shown on that <coughs> attachment, I'm, I'm sorry right. about that. It's drawn back from the uh, intersection itself, so there's probably room for one or two cars to get into the roundabout, and then they've already gone past the pedestrian crossing area, and they're only worried about the left-hand movement in that roundabout. So the pedestrians are back farther. And they only have to look one way when they're crossing. So we could bring some better sketches in, but I guess I, I just personally never seen one. I was mm -hmm. just yeah. curious. Yeah. Well, this is a school area, so there is yeah, going to be a lot be of crossing. Right. Uh, this is in my ward. I, I've had a number of people contact me, and and all, everybody in support of this. Um, they that three uh, that three o'clock time, that seven thirty to eight o'clock time in the morning. They're backed up for a l past my house, a couple blocks away in the morning. Um, I think this would keep the traffic flow moving in the morning and in the afternoon. So there wouldn't be, there's people that have complained to me that they have to leave work early. Otherwise, if they get caught in that half hour rush, they're not moving. And especially trying to get on to Highland Avenue or, or on to Oak Street, depending on which, we're, which way they're going. But um, I would strongly support this. I think not only for safety reasons, but for traffic flow in our community. It's just a lot of cars coming in and out of there in that half hour period of time twice a day so so based on what you said Les, why wouldn't we consider a roundabout at fifth north i mean we're going to put one on each side of fifth north but we aren't going to at fifth north to also to keep the i don't if think you want the traffic to flow yeah why wouldn't you put another fifth one? north isn't as bad it's bad there too um you know i live down on heinen hill street and they're backed up past my house i mean even a block past that in the morning um but it's not as bad as is it because past my house it's all the way to the school in the morning um, so you know if on Highland on Highland yeah yeah but then you're, you're also stopping at fifth north right there it is it is um, one at a time maybe I don't know but yeah but I was just kind of curious yeah. when I looked at it why we're leaving the center out of it yeah mr. president I don't disagree that a, a roundabout should probably eventually be constructed at fifth north and Highland the, the distinction in my mind is you don't have the the delayed turning moment turning movement yeah. like the left hand turn when you're going north on Highland and you want to get into Oak Street or the high school yeah. you're kind of stuck there because the, everyone else has the right away so at Highland there's a four-way stop and it just creates a lot of delay but everyone can go their turn and there's no conflict with the turning movement so in my mind that's the difference so Oak Street is a little more um, confusing uh, and Highland is creates a lot of delay and uh, center has got some limited space issues so those are yeah. kind of the differences and Highland's got the uh, fifth north's got the hill too the hill issue coming up a hill I don't mm -hmm. know <coughs> Steve did you have these numbers in our budget for 2019 that we were I, I did not as I mentioned the uh, the 30,000 that we had in for that storm stormwater feasibility study could probably be used to fund if if not all of this engineering but um, otherwise you'd have to add some additional um, uh, funding for that uh, if you know if the council wants us to move ahead with this we can try and get some proposals and and come back with the engineering and give some recommendations on how you can fund the uh, the construction project it, itself so if we were to move forward and, and say we wanted to get this project underway, how long would it take? Well, the earliest that uh, this could be constructed would be 2019 because we'd have to do the survey work and the engineering and get it out for bids next spring. So it's it, summer work? It, it would be, be summer, summer work, work, similar to what all our other projects. So we would try one intersection and then come back and probably go after Center Street next. And is that is the, the recommendation consensus? from uh, the Safety Commission, and I tend to agree with it. I I think that would be the prudent way to move ahead. There's just a lot of work next year already stacking up, but we'd like to try and you know make this a little safer and and yeah. deal with that delay and congestion. 
I think safety has always got to be priority when it comes to our kids. So I'm going to offer <coughs> offer the motion to accept the recommendation for the safety commission to construct a mini roundabout on Highland Avenue at Oak Street and Center. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <laughs> Item five A. Consider a motion to <coughs> approve a five-year agreement with the Citizens Bank of Minnesota to provide banking services for the City of New Ulm, New Ulm Public Utilities, New Ulm EDA, and affiliated organizations for the year years <coughs> beginning January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2023. Nicole, got some on that? Um, as we have with some of our other services this year, we just w we went out for bids. Um, we received bids from Citizens, United Prairie, and Bank Midwest. Um, citizens by far had the best interest rate and the lowest fees in comparison and um, our, our relationship with them has been excellent over the last last few terms of their of their contract so we recommend going ahead with Citizens Bank thank you I'll offer the motion to approve second we have a motion and a second approving <coughs> any more discussion seeing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all no Motion carries. Item 5B, consider compensation adjustments for the mayor and city councilors. I guess you got all the information in front of you. Chris asked if you should make a presentation. I says I don't think he needs to. It's something that we can see what's taking place, discuss it, and if we want to make any suggested changes at this time. You know, I, I talked about this last time and, and had a little bit more thought to this. Um, when we talked last time, I was pushing more of the stipends, and I kind of backed off and giving that after giving that a little bit more thought. Um, we give, a, and Charlie talked about this last time, that we give our city employees our cost of living increases every year. And, and what a lot of cities do is they wait five, six, ten years, and then they get they realize that they get pretty low on the compensation scale, so then they give themselves a large increase, which is what we did a couple of years ago to catch up. And then we wait five, 10 years, and then we do it again, and that's what other cities do. And the county, I know, has changed their format to f kind of following the cost of living, which is what they do with their employees. So, so maybe the best way around this, instead of making these big jumps every five to 10 years, is to do exactly what the county's doing now is is on an annual basis or semi-annual basis is just simply to apply the cost of living to what they give their employees they give to their city councilors and it kind of seems to make sense and we have to my understanding is it has to be brought up um, on the election years to be voted on we can't just automatically do it um, but I think that would make prudent sense and I don't know what my count other counselors would say so if we voted on that this year uh, we would get a two and a half percent increase of our current salary we wouldn't vote on it next year we would have to then vote on it again in 2020 and then we would take whatever COLA is being proposed for the non-union employees that year is that do I, I, is that making sense Roger we would whatever you want to propose I guess the council will decide I, mean I think it makes sense. Um, I, I know, to me, that it, it's so be a, a minimal raise, which is fine. We, we're in, um, I just that's my two cents. I guess coming off of where you came from, going through the the study that we have in front of us, if you actually look at it, there's about three or four st cities in here that must do a similar thing because you got some that are like nine thousand eight hundred and twenty nine dollars. Mm -hmm. You've got twenty forty seven dollars. Yeah. So they, they got to be doing something, something different similar. in order to get an, an odd number at the end. Right. So based on what you said is, like I, you said, I made the comment last time, I think it's something that we should do. And then it we'll use the word, it's probably up to Nicole, an automatic thing, but it gets put on the agenda up front and you approve it every other year. Yeah, if it's what you want to do, I can add it to my schedule to just bring it bring an yeah. agenda item. So to the council every, every two, two years, years you take yeah. the previous two years cost of living and just throw it out there as an agenda item, prove it, and go on with life. And the sitting council at that time would then decide if they don't right. want to do it, they don't have to do it. Right. If they want to do it, they can mm -hmm. do it. 
Mm-hmm. I guess Any I'm pretty indi- I'm pretty indifferent to it. I guess um, I'm fine with the way it is. It's not like we're we're, we're on the upper half of it. Um, right. You know, if we look at it in two years again as a whole, I don't know. It, I'm, I'm indifferent. It doesn't. Well, you'd have to uh, wait always two years for right. to review it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that becomes a problem. Then it's if we wait two years and we wait two more, then we wait two more. Then it's like, well, now we're at the bottom of the scale. Now we got to go back up here if we want to stay somewhat even. And then that's when the general public is like, why are you raising it so much when you could have just done a little at a time like we do with the employees? You know, right. it's just, I think we need to treat ourselves as fairly as we treat our employees. I don't My thought. And I, I'm going to offer a motion to see where it goes. If it doesn't go, it doesn't go. Um, so I'll offer a motion that every other year, <coughs> excuse me, every other year that um, our um, our finance director bring to the council um, a reminder to the council to take a look at a, um, a COLA, a cost of living adjustment, the same as non-union employees for consideration and vote and I would make, can I add in that motion that we do that for this year <coughs> as well? Okay. Yeah, I'll do that as well. No, the, the motion, excuse me. Maybe I need to make two. The, yeah, the, the motion is to ask for a reminder. Yeah. It's not oh. for mm-hmm. a raise. Yeah. You so wanna if you want to raise, I think you have to do a separate motion. Okay, so, so let's specifying just do that. what the amount would be. Let's do the reminder motion first. We'll offer a motion that in 2020 would be the next one, or that, that be an ongoing reminder that our finance director bring to us a, re- a reminder that we look at a COLA adjustment <coughs> at in August. August, right? Probably. That include for the counselors and the mayor as well, right? Yes, counselor and the mayor. Do we have a second? So. You have to second it for discussion. Do we, um, oh, before the discussion? You don't have to approve it. <laughs> I'll offer a second. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion? Um, <laughs> so does that include PUC? Do we set it for the PUC commission also? No. We don't. They no. set their own? I yes. thought we I thought we set We'd lock their theirs in a few years ago. We Yeah, didn't we yes. lock that in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just didn't know if. They set their own. The city charter, I believe, states that they get the same unless otherwise decided. Unless otherwise decided, And then correct. we increased ours but locked <laughs> it in. Right. And we have the option to change it any time. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you would leave them out of that increase? I think so, yeah. You want I to win? Well, I mean... I, they're doing a job similar to our job, and if why would we leave them out? Um, I think because we're elected officials, we have more meetings than they do. Um, our meetings are longer than theirs. Not their job is important, it mm-hmm. is. I just think that there's a distinction there. I think that's why we chose to freeze it at the, that um, couple, two or three years ago. If they want to put a request in, then I think we as a council could then take a look at it. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no? No. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? No. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. We want a second motion that that go into that this go into effect this next January first, January first, two thousand and eight, nineteen, right? Councilor Schultz, I think you have to specify yeah. either a dollar amount or a percentage, some way that it can right. be calculated so that the uh, finance director and the citizens know what your proposal is. So can I say that it would be a motion to the same cost of living approved? By city staff? No, I, mean, I think no, we no. no. We just 
Do you have a number? A 2.5 percent. It could be that number. Sure. Yeah, whatever you okay. want to propose. So the current offering now city employees is 2.5 percent for 2019. So that's the motion that I would offer. That's the amount that's in the budget, but that's not the amount that has been approved by the city council. Because we haven't approved that yet. That's correct. Okay. I can set it at anything. I mean, if we're going to go in the theory of that we're saying going every two years, mm -hmm. well, last year would have been 2%. So you can go back to two, you can go to four, you can do anything you want. You just have to set a number. <laughs> How come? I, I, I'm confused too. Why can't he set? said that it would that the city council gets the same raise as the employees that year the I, you cost have of to, living. excuse me council you, you have to specify again for the benefit of the taxpayers and the citizens what A this is going to mean amount. to them yep. right. okay yep. okay mm -hmm. so you could wait till december when you know what the employees cola adjustment i thought there was a time issue with that right? yes yeah, before the be, general it's got to be done yeah. prior to the vote has to okay. be prior to the election so what's our timeline on that? Isn't it before uh, November, November 14th? So we'd have to, in the next couple of months, do it anyway. So you just will do it now. Otherwise, you're going to have to bring it up on the agenda again anyway and before November election. Right. When will we vote on that, on the cost of living for the staff? December. Do we do it that same that, day? No, it'll be December. Mm -hmm. That'll December. be in December. That's after the election. Mm-hmm. So do we want to skip it this time and just do it in two years? We could do that too. Well, that's what your motion was for in two years to have a re Nicole have a reminder. Have a reminder. But it's whether what percentage or what dollar amount. Well, we'd have to set the dollar set. amount at that time. Why couldn't we just do the review every two years and do the survey every then every two years and evaluate it rather than doing? A and percentage. then set a dollar amount. And rather then set than a dollar amount. So then, you know, if we're starting to hit that middle and we want up at a hundred dollars, or you know, rather than doing two percent, two percent, two percent. Well, that the thought the behind it was is to have consistent follow the same as the employees. Yeah. Whatever the employees got is what we would get. But we would always be two years behind if we go the other way. <clears throat> this might just be a suggestion that you may want to think about and you didn't have to make any decisions on this but you know the CPI is based upon what it takes to feed a family of four milk gasoline clothes rent etc cetera, etc cetera. <coughs> uh, that's their prime the CPI is usually applied to the primary income for that family to exist uh, I don't know that anybody is necessarily living off your city council right. wages uh, you may have other jobs or you may be retired so the, I, I guess I would recommend, you know, just not tying it to a CPI, looking at the, a dollar figure and being done with it because, you know, the wages are, the CPI is based on what it, it actually costs to live. And this isn't, I guess in my mind, maybe a, a living wage is what we're talking about here. It's compensation. And it may be just simpler just to say 50 bucks, 100 bucks, and not tie it to percentages and... Well, two and a half percent of our current salary would be a two hundred dollar increase. So, um, I'll offer that as a motion for next year's compensation and see if that goes anywhere. So, I would offer a motion of, of two hundred dollars for our salary starting January first, two thousand nineteen. And that would make the mayor's two sixty two fifty. The mayor would have his pay is higher. So, if you want to do two percent, yes. You well, it'd be no, well. no, just and two percent according to Roger. So increase two hundred dollars. Okay. It'd have to be a dollar amount. He's not living off of his either, so he gets less. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Do we have a second? 
motion dies for lack of second. Move on. All right. Does Item, that, huh? that, that still means we'll review it again in two <coughs> years? Yep. Okay. Yep. Item 6A, consider resolution setting an interest rate of 4.40% for special assessments levied for the projects financed by the General Obligation Permanent Improvement Revolving Fund Bond Series 2018A. Nicole. Um, Councilors, generally this rate is set at 2% above what the bonds are issued for. Um, they were issued at 2.41% this year, so this would set the assessment rate at 4.4%. Thank you. Any more discussion? <coughs> I'll offer the resolution waive the reading, setting an interest rate of 4.40% for special assessments levied for projects financed by General Obligation Permanent Improvement Revolving Fund Bonds, Series 2018A. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Finance aye. Director, please aye. call the roll. Councilor <coughs> Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Item 6B, consider a motion authorizing the entering into an updated school resource resource officer agreement contract contract with Independent School District 88. I'll move it. Second. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Item 6C, consider resolution to accept donations offered to the city for the Park and Rec Department at, for specified purposes. Uh, I was in attendance at the Park and Rec meeting. Again, they did have a great donation list, so I'll offer the resolution waive the reading to accept the following donations to the City of Nome for the Park and Rec Department. Days of play events, $500 cash, m &R paving, $100 cash from the Sertoma Club of Nome, and $500 cash from the OMG Midwest and UQQ. Uh, German Park Paver Stone Improvements, $100 cash from Nancy Ginkle, Anna Stan, and Ola Dietrich and family. $100 cash from Carissa Lindmeyer Bugler, honoring Michael J. Reinhardt's. Keesing House Program, this one is very welcome to the Keesing House Program. $10,000 cash from Ms. Barbara S. Haraldson. Uh, Herman 5K Sponsorship, $150 cash from Nuvera. Wonderful donations. Thank you. Thank you. We had a motion second. and a second to offer resolution. Waived reading. In did, finance, somebody huh? did somebody second it already? Yes. Oh, oh. You were the second. Second. Oh, yeah. did it. Sorry. Any more discussion? Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Notes will be in the mail in the morning. There you go, Mayor. Item 6D, consider a request for the park from an Upper Cottonwood Street, Dakota West, subdivision, area, residence. That's for parks. Tom. Tom Schmitz, Park and Recreation Department. President Schmitz and counselors, residents in the Upper Cottonwood Street and Dakota West subdivision have approached me with their interest and desire to have a neighborhood park. Um, and so I put it on the Park and Rec Commission agenda, and at the last meeting, the Park and Rec Commission recommended uh, to study it and to uh, have the City Council authorize staff to look into it. <coughs> uh, in the comprehensive plan, there is a proposed park in that neck of the woods, so to speak. Um, I, it's a, we're anticipating further development to the south of the Dakota West subdivision, uh, and it might the comp plan kind of proposes that and that the park would be in that vicinity to serve Dakota West subdivision and um, future development to the south. We have a resident of the Dakota West subdivision here, a spokesperson for the group. There's quite a number of people out there that are quite interested in a park. So if you would like to hear from Tracy Winchittle, she'd be happy to speak. Tracy and her echo. <laughs> <laughs> that was for effect, I think. Yeah. Uh, one comment I'd like to make before she step, steps up to the mic. Uh, I was in attendance at the Park and Rec meeting. 
going to try and fix that or not? <laughs> They're working on it. Oh, I think they got it. No? No. Nope. Yeah, that one. Ellen. It's inside. That one. Over here, Chris. There you go. Are we good now? I think we might be. Test, test. There we go. Yeah. One comment I would like to make on it. I mean, I understand the need for a park out there. Again, I was the one that actually made the motion to have the park and rec look into it. But we, we did tell the residents at that meeting, this isn't going to happen next year or overnight. It could be a few years before a park is implemented in that area. Just council will be aware of that. I don't have any issue with the park and rec or the staff looking into the possibilities, but it's not going to happen next year. It's going to be a few years. But it's got to start somewhere, right? It, it's got to start somewhere. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Tracy Winchell. I live at 1309 Settler Trail, and I'm representing all of my neighbors up in the neighborhood. Um, they couldn't be here because they all have children. So um, right now, I don't know if anyone's really been up there lately. Um, Councilor Matt came up last Friday night and spoke with several of um, my neighbors and myself, and we talked about the possibility of having a park come up. Um, right now, there's 40 children that live up there and we don't have any close park access. Um, the closest park that we have is, well, technically is Adams Park, which is a nature park. So we can't really count that as a park for our children. Most times it's underwater from the Cottonwood River. Um, other than that, the closest park would be behind Target. And if you've been up there, the neighborhood has really developed. Um, I've lived up there for three years and within that time, there have been several houses that have developed up there. Um, currently, there's about five lots that are not sold. They're still state owned. Um, three of the lots are right behind my house. Um, when we look at the closest park behind the old Target building, in order for our children to get there, we have to walk down Cottonwood, which will not have a sidewalk all the way up to our neighborhood. I mean, they're putting a sidewalk in now, but it doesn't follow the whole way. And then also we, in order to walk there, we have to walk along Highway 15, which does not have a sidewalk on it. So there's no safe way for our children to get there. Um, if the river is flooded, the closest one is Herman. And we have to take the gravel road back <coughs> behind the town and onto Center Street. So it's quite a jaunt. Um, Usually, we have to load the kids into the car, we have to go find a park, um, so it takes quite some time. Along with our 40 children that live up there, there is also a daycare with 10 children, and we also have several um, grandparents that live up there also who are <coughs> all in supportive of the park. Um, we pay taxes like everyone else. We pay a lot of taxes, so I think it's only fair that we also have a park up there. I know um, Schmidt said that um, you know there is a proposed plan where the park will be. Unfortunately, the proposed plan is straightening out Cottonwood, adding the lots, annexing them into the city, and our children are young, but as you all know, children grow up really fast and they do and right now the closest or the best that we can do is offer them the empty lots to play in they're all overgrown with weeds we have a lot of deer and turkey up there which is amazing but it, with that comes a lot of feces in those empty lots and so our kids are playing in those empty lots overgrown weeds <coughs> that's the best that they can do and they take it but we'd love to see just a playground. We're not looking for something huge. We're not looking for a big, um, like a big shelter area. We just want a playground and maybe some green space. When Councillor Matt came and spoke to us, we had a huge turnout. Um, several of my neighbors came and we looked at some of the lots up there. Um, there are three lots behind my house on um, Settler and Ben Circle. Those three lots are not currently sold. They are still state owned. The problem with building on those lots is that all of our, the water, the rainwater from my house goes right into that lot. So that's gonna be a problem for anyone that wants to build on those lots. Also the lots are narrow or oddly shaped. So the houses up there right now all have attached garages. 
in order, it's my understanding, in order to build on those lots, that they would have to have either a single attached garage or a non-attached garage. And I could be wrong, but that's kind of my understanding on that. So I don't see those lots really getting filled. Now, if we would, or you guys would decide that um, to go ahead and build on those lots, that would be great, but it doesn't mean that we don't have to continue with the proposed plan, but it's something that we can start. And um, all of the children on Cottonwood, I mean, my numbers don't even include the numbers of the kids that are that live on Cottonwood Street. That's just in the Dakota Settler Bend Circle area. Um, we've also talked with Councilor Mack about doing a community build park. Up there we have Brent Johnson Construction lives up there. Um, my husband does a lot of personal work for people. Um, we have um, Matt Heil Construction lives up there also. And so um, we have a lot of resourceful husbands <laughs> that would um, really love to help and um, make a park possible up there. So that's all I have. It's really Go ahead, Larry. <laughs> 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 I met with uh, the neighbors up there in uh, Ward 4 up there in Dakota West Edition last Friday evening about 6 o'clock. Uh, they've got a lot of enthusiasm. They see an opportunity with three undeveloped lots right in, uh, on Ben's Circle and on Settler Road. They don't want to wait <coughs> for the road to get straightened out and more land to be annexed into the community. I, I did tell them, you know, it's not going to happen overnight if you want to build a park and we'd have to take a hard look at as a council if we would want to rezone lots you know and we have to look at a couple of, you know Are everybody i met lots? with on friday night was all in favor of this you know i did receive uh, a couple of phone calls one phone call one one email uh that were were against it you know because they don't want a park okay. across the street from their home really but you know, in that vicinity, or they're concerned about traffic and things of that nature. And all I told them, you know, it'd have to come to the planning commission for rezoning on that aspect. So it's it's a it's a long process. You know, if we're going to change residential I, to you know, a designated park can go in any residential area. Correct. But if we're going to, we have to look at if we're going to acquire the land. Uh, that yeah. you know, and you know, the process of the land and the assessments. It's not just an overnight decision. You know. I don't have those numbers in front of me is what I had told him on Friday evening. Up right there. I mean, I would have to refer to Dave Schnobrick and uh, Brian. Dave Schnobrick, Community Development Director. Regarding uh, the, the rezoning issue, uh, a park is a permitted use in an R1 zoning district, so no action would have to be taken um, okay. on that. It could be established uh, immediately. Okay. And just just for clarification, <coughs> though, there are, there are two kinds of parks, and and what what is being requested here would be a uh, a city-owned parcel used for recreational purposes. If this was a platted, a brand new plat, and they designated that this piece of land would be a park, that that that's that's the other kind of park. That's a dedicated park. Uh, and then you have a few more restrictions if you say you want to get rid of that park you have to go through the resolutions and all that because it has been platted and it's just more work one can own city property use it as a park but it not be a dedicated park and you could move it and and where i'm going with this is simply put that actually the first step has been taken uh, this is not the first step. The first step was in the comprehensive plan identifying that there would be a park in that general area. And then as the developments occurred, we would then, in one of the developments, decide what parcel of land makes the most sense. Uh, I would also suggest that there's a coordination that should go on be between the PUC and the city on locating parks because sometimes we can jointly use land for the same or for our individual purposes, and we don't have to have two separate pieces of land. Uh, so it, it's, it's much better for uh, 
you know, using uh, the, the land to its maximum use. The PUC is going to re require a water tower in that general vicinity. We've been talking about it since about 2002 when somebody wanted to develop further south on the south side of uh, Cottonwood Street. And uh, the uh, half or, uh, yeah, three-fourths of the way up the hill, you have that booster station. That is a short-term solution for the PUC. The long-term solution is a water tower. So the park was proposed <clears throat> to be in the next development down the road. Uh, the water tower is proposed to be in the next development down the road. Uh, if, if the park was not that done that way, we would have had a dedicated park in this subdivision. But the uh, comprehensive plan says, here's how far you should travel, and the next development is where a park should be. Now, going back to my original statement, there's nothing stopping the city from putting on a piece of land they own, <coughs> a small playground set of, of something for the you know, little kids. And that's what I'm kind of hearing here. And this might be a short, uh, short-term solution because the long-term solution is really tied to the person who owns the land that's currently a cornfield or a soybean field. And until he, he or she decides to sell that to a developer, you never know when that that park will actually occur. So, uh, short-term versus long-term, dedicated versus not dedicated, and. Uh, it's a simple decision, I think, either on the city council to uh, or, or the park for all that matters is to uh, recommend doing a small project if that's the way you want to go. <coughs> so if I'm understanding here, Brian, we could, if we as a council want to move forward with this, we could figure out what it takes to acquire the land. You know, so we'd have to determine if we need one lot or three lots, and then uh, come up with the assessments, you know, all the numbers, and bring that back to council. And then would we use like our land acquisition fund for purchase or well, uh, our parkland fund? Yeah, maybe I could simplify that just a tad, and that is <clears throat> the county is offering the land for sale, so that's really the only cash outlay. The city already paid off the assessments. We would be, in essence, paying ourselves back for the assessment. So really, your only cash outlay is what we would pay to, to Brown County to actually acquire the land. All right, having said that, uh, at, at some point in the future, if the property to the south were to develop, you know, new housing subdivision, uh, we define a, a city park, a PUC, water tower, joint, you know, use of, of land, uh, city could then in essence <laughs> I hate to say this because it's like it's never going to happen take that small park down and sell the lot off right. at sure. that point in time you know those are always hard to do because everybody's used to the that little playground but you that that would be the the plan it's there was no park designated for that area so but when it, when the real park shows up you shut it down sell the lot off and a house gets built <coughs> and so that's that would could happen, or it could stay a little park for as long as. Do uh, would we have to have a public hearing then if we just want to change it and put a park in because it was not plotted, and then we just make a council decision? Mm -hmm. I believe not because see, residential see use is permitted use, correct? Park and rec. Uh, it may be necessary uh, for staff to investigate. There are some um, development restrictions that um, apply to that particular subdivision. Meaning like may need, and there may be a, I don't, I'm just thinking out loud, there may be a restriction that each lot has to have a house on it or something equivalent to that. And uh, there may have been restrictive so covenants in yeah, addition yeah. to a development agreement. Yeah. Um, Old playgrounds, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, it seems to me, though, that there was a discussion a while back that, you know, all uh, uh, property that, uh, you know, goes to the county or the state, I, it was my understanding that the... Uh, underlying uh, uh, materials sometimes go away? Um, the um, underlying um, restrictions that were put in place by the owner are currently in place because we went through that uh, yeah. in our discussion so. with the county about uh, their potential uh, wanting to apply for a, a rezoning of the property. So. All right. 
Okay, so that that's one thing that probably should look at before yeah. we can go I mean, that way. Like I say, when I met with everybody they had a, on last Friday, they had a lot of enthusiasm and everything else like that, and I said we can bring it for council discussion and see what the council would want to do. So I guess um, should I have a motion to uh, pursue to have staff uh, check out uh, existing covenances to the Dakota West edition and uh, bring that information back to council for our next step. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hey, yeah, I, I think we probably, you know, we've, all the councilors got an email from the individual down at Goosetown uh, upset that they've had a park proposed um, and it's been passed by the park and rec twice and they're claiming nothing's happening with that park. Mm -hmm. So why are we working on this one when they haven't approved the one down at Goosetown? And then I uh, got a, a call from an individual, kind of the same discussion about a up at the diocese division when everybody paid 500 into a park fund in that division and they have no park and why are we now working on a park down that area and where's our park so and then we're currently working on everybody fender wants parks and we're working on fender park also you know. yeah and we have yeah. seven undeveloped parks Correct. we already have no, the land no. but do we actually have the land for the goose Town park um that that individual has did we no. Acquire it. We approved. There's a concept, concept. Um, that is kind of a parkway of city-owned land from the former putting green site, present community garden site, northward to like 13th um, Front Street, 13th South Front Street, you know, including the berm. So there's just <coughs> a concept of a parkway there. There are, in your package, you've got a list of all these different undeveloped park right. areas, some of which are owned, some of which are designated, some of which are not designated. Um, I think that the uh, Upper Cottonwood st Street does stand out somewhat differently because of the difficulty for them to get to their nearest neighborhood park, which would be South Park, yeah. okay? Um, a fender is across the street from Highland Park, where there's a shelter and a playground. Um, you know, Go South Goose Town area is within walking distance to Riverside Park. So I, I think that's there is some elements and components that might um, identify Upper Cottonwood Street area as somewhat unique in their needs for uh, so public So did the Cottonwood access. folks, did they, when that was developed, did they put money into like a park fund too, like the diocese folks had to? Well, certainly the Parkland Dedication Account. So they all had to put a percentage of yes it's in the too. user uh, it's in our fee schedule any development there's some funds that go into the parkland dedication okay. account okay. who puts that in there actually when you apply for the building permit the council had a, established a parkland dedication fee and that's when it's collected right. yeah. drives that's the building, building permit good. sky high but it's that a parkland dedication the, fee. The, the person that owned the land mm -hmm. right okay um, the parkland dedication fee is actually paid in two parts. One part comes with the platting of the property, so the owner who's doing the platting pays a fee, and then an equal amount is paid when the building permit is pulled for the... Uh, so did we get the one. first part? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, Tom, that would be where we have that 180000 give or take. Is that where these parkland funds are? Yes. From? That yes. we haven't used for some time? Well, we have used some, some. for there, um, yeah, Fender there's, Park. There's actually about 213000 in there, but there's 73000 budgeted to be used for the Fender Park this yes. year. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is streets, curb, gutter, sidewalk, not playgrounds. Mm -hmm. And, and um, just an alternative also is that if, if the uh, covenants and or restrictions on land in that subdivision <coughs> don't pan out, there's other property owners that in that general area, you know, that aren't tied to the, mm -hmm. to the development. Uh, yes, and that's what I would recommend we, we focus in on the proposed action, keep it broad rather than uh, narrowly focused at Dakota West so that staff evaluates all potential opportunities in the Upper Cottonwood Street area and report back to council. 
I'm okay with the, the exploring of this. I am concerned that we're starting a project here, we start a project there, or yeah. um, others wanting parks in their area, we might and get And they've been waiting requests. a long time, too. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm, I'm perfectly fine with exploring and seeing our yeah. options out there. Right. At least we get it on the radar, and then <laughs> we can say in 2019, we're pursuing this one, maybe 2020 this one, or go down the line. And say we got <coughs> another five-year plan yeah, to, to finish the parks. Oh, Dennis Bourne. Right. Entertain a motion. We have it motion in a second. Oh, yeah. we did. All right. Sorry about that. Any more discussion? The motion was just to look at Dakota West only, I think. Yes. Correct. Right. Would you prefer us to look at the uh, entire Upper Cottonwood Street area? Um, I can rebut. I can revise my motion from earlier. I said uh, Dakota West edition uh, on Settler and Benz, but I can make it to explore the whole Cottonwood Street development, south of Cottonwood Street. And I would and recommend that. Report the options back to City Council. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item 6A or 6E, consider a motion to receive coalition from the Clean River, uh, Clean Minnesota River, notice of lease termination for the Riverside Park building. I'll move it. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? That's effective July 31st, 2018. The, the one question <coughs> I do want to bring up with the, with the lease, and I, I spoke with the individual on it. Uh, Last winter we did that where we now pay the heating bills for the Kiesling House. We also pay the heating bills for the Riverside Park. Uh, one thing that's a little different here, I know they do comparisons that we're setting a precedence or whatnot, like the Sportsman's Club Trap Range, which charges a fee to their members, is where they get their income from. I did check into that. Kiesling House just got a one heck of a nice donation. I don't want to see this program that Mr. Baldwin does here go down the tube because he doesn't have any income coming in for the project i personally live down there i watch thousands of kids from the around the new home area surrounding area come in here for this free program i'm just hoping that we can get the lease for the city i, I wasn't privy to the information on finding out what the utilities were for the last <coughs> couple of years because a private individual paid them data privacy act so i really don't know but i can't believe we're talking tens of thousands of dollars for the le electric bill for the months of what june july august september october um councillor christian uh, i think that's the next action right. form oh. we're just yeah. accepting we just, we just ccmr's okay. termination My now fault. and then we're going to talk about walden next yep. <laughs> people moving out people moving in all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed, no motion carries item 6f consider a resolution offering the riverside <coughs> park building lease agreement with ron bolden now, Dave. Well, as you can tell, how strong <laughs> I feel about it. <laughs> how do you feel about this, Dave? <laughs> I just, I mean, it, it's a project for kids. I mean, all of our park and recs are supposed to be about kids. This is thousands of kids go through there. I know other councils have been down to see it. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed when uh, the teachers came over from Mankato and actually checking, can you bring this clerk in to us or do we have to bus our kids here? I'd hate to see that go away because this individual doesn't have any income or charging any fees for it. Our building, oldest school in New Ulm, it's a nature history learning center that we can't absorb it. There's a donation jar there in the corner, but I don't know what he, how much he <laughs> gets. <laughs> but I guess I'll, I'll agree with Dave. I was down there a few weeks back here and toured it when you were in there and I kind of motioned to you, but I can't believe what you do down there. It's just phenomenal. It's just mind-boggling i mean everything that you have in there and i took pictures and everything too because to be honest i was into once before but that's many years ago and it's it's something that every community wished they had and here we have it right in front of us i think it's just the best thing in the world my and granddaughter the, had a blast in there this summer so and the preservation committee is uh, interested because that is the last schoolhouse okay the rest have been torn down Thank you for all the kind words from both of you. It, uh, I, not just because it's my baby, but I think it is a fantastic program. We get out, not only do we deal with kids from 
the immediate area, but it's at least a four or five county draw right now, and I get feelers from lots of surrounding communities, and if it's in warm weather, they come to New Ulm, and they usually, as often as not, they'll start with Riverside Park, and they'll go to Flandreau State Park, and it's an exposure for New Ulm. I think it's a Any idea how many kids you get a, a year? It's, it's that day I was down there, there was two busloads. It, uh, well, it was, it was hard to gauge right now <laughs> because uh, last winter when I finally got heat that I could do winter programming, which, you know, I'm eliminated from doing school programming during the cold months because we had no heat in there. Mm -hmm. So I could only have programs up to mid-October and then start again late part of April. So I would, and that, that time I was getting probably 1,500 plus people in there. The vast majority are kids. Right. You know, they do have adult escorts and we are open for visitors. I'm down there every Sunday and a couple other days a week and I take calls and I accept groups on short notice. I, I have no life, so. <laughs> <laughs> you got a great life. <laughs> it's, it is, I get more out of it than they do. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a lot and now this winter I will, I was in rehab, I had some major back surgery and that spent most of the winter in rehab so I couldn't do any programming. But God willing, this year I'm gonna be down there and the schools are going to be coming in more than they have ever before because I couldn't offer them anything from the main school period. And I know we're gonna have a ton of them and it's all hands on and they, the kids just love it. And I started this whole project actually going way back to when I was a kid and I used to go into the Isaac Walton League building mm -hmm. at the fair. And I was just fascinated with, with the uh, mounted animals, the taxidermy and that created a monster in me and it's just gotten <laughs> totally out of hand and you're all invited to come down sometime. I think you'll be very impressed. I have a couple of faithful sponsors but still pretty limited funding and I just work with what I have every year and spend it up, spend it on items for display and hands on for the visitors. Any questions I'd be happy to answer or try to answer. Anybody have anything? I guess my comment is, is I favor paying the utilities and thank you for everything you're doing and hope it goes on for years. And by the way, there is a super session or a succession plan here. I have a daughter who the acorn didn't fall far from the tree. Mm -hmm. She's involved and my son-in-law is very involved. So when mm -hmm. I'm finished, Great. I don't like to use that word, but when, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm out of there, they are going to take over. They promised right. me they would, so, and they help now. All right, thank you. So I guess I would, any more questions? Otherwise entertain a motion. I'll offer, offer a resolution, wave the reading. Second. We have a motion and a second offer a resolution waived reading advising or directing the city attorney to draft an agreement lease with Ron and go forward. Uh, before the council votes, Mr. President, yeah. could, there's been discussion about responsibility for the utilities, just so I'm aware of what the council's oh. position is on that. The proposal was that it would be similar terms to what the previous tenant had, which would uh, require the tenant to pay some part of that. But if uh -oh. your decision is that you the city would just cover the utilities 12 months out of the year. I just need to know what your position is on that. I guess my opinion is, is pay for it because I think it does such a benefit for the community that the utilities is a, just a small cost. Yeah. You would never get this anywhere in the world for what we're getting. And if he wants to use the funds to fix up the building or do That's some odds and ends, yeah. I think he would do very fine with that. So yeah, I'll include the utilities as part of the motion. Also, is that right, Ron? Handicapped location of ramping hmm? around. Handicapped location. Access. Access. I think when this, excuse me again, Mr. President, but I think when the previous tenants uh, situation came up, I know there was some discussion and concern about um, ADA compatibility. Hmm. And I think um, that the Park and Rec Director has looked into that. Apparently, with the bathroom, we have that taken care of, but I'm still not sure about accessibility if yeah. that's an issue. Uh, President Schmitz yes. and Councilors, you see under primary issues number four, 
Um, we are preparing <coughs> a conceptual plan for a ramp system along the side of the building um, to wrap around to the rear where there would be a proposed deck providing access into the uh, main level. So um, that's not funded as far as construction goes, but the preliminary concept will be bringing to the Park Commission um, and possibly HPC in, in the next month or two. The building official supports this concept. But okay. presently, the building's not accessible. We'll get there. We'll get it. Little steps. Any more discussion? Seeing oh. none, finance director, please call a roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carried. Item 6G, consider resolution offering the removing of the bus parking only designated and signs at Shawnall Park. I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second, offer the resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Oh, resolution. Sorry. Council Finance Council Director, Council please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 6H, consider a motion authorizing a temporary portable storage shed at Harmon Park for Cathedral High School activities. I'll move it. We've done this before. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. Motion carries. Item 6I, consider resolution authorizing the Emerald Ash Bore grant application. Tom? President Schmitz and counselors, you have before you a request to apply to a Minnesota Department of Natural Resources grant uh, for $30,000 to be matched locally with city funds of $6,000 to implement some Emerald Ash Bore uh, preemptive management plans, basically removing um, poor condition large ash trees and planting in diverse trees in their place. Uh, the grant application deadline is Friday and I'm prepared to submit that grant application if you so authorize this evening and the $6,000 local cash match can come from the Tree Advisory Commission and the Park and Rec Department funds. <coughs> I'll offer the resolution waive the reading to authorize the Emerald Ash Bore grant application. Second. We have a motion and a second off the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? I guess, Tom, these trees, are we going to remove them on city right away first or city parks and boulevards first or is this for? Yes, uh, city uh, facility lands, city building and facility lands, including parks um, and also boulevards. Okay. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Item 6J, consider a request from Dan Horner, performance auto start and security at 1218 North Front Street, New Orleans, Minnesota, to schedule a public hearing for a noise variance from to the city code 8.08 .08 noise restrictions to allow amplified music during the Midwest SPL and DB drag show. And that is for Tuesday, September 4th, 2018 at 430 and also on September 8th, 2018 from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. This is our individual that's had a lot of noise violations, right? And been prosecuted by our city. That is correct. And we can maybe have a public hearing, but I don't know if I'm going to approve this. They had it, I believe, last year. I don't know if we got any. We I don't think I don't think a request was made. Well, probably right. wasn't. Well, it was probably didn't ask right. for. Yeah, it. I think there was some <laughs> issues there last were, there year. Were comments. I heard there it. Were That's why. Calls. Okay. Yeah, there was. Uh, I could provide this if you want to go ahead with the public hearing. Um, Mr. Horner and other participants were the subject of a fairly extensive article in the Minneapolis Tribune earlier this year, uh, which I saved, where they participated in doing this at the state fairgrounds. It's kind of an unusual article. The writer didn't do a whole lot of research into it, but they did quote a doctor, an audiologist, who was talking about the damage that these levels can do to one's ears. 
Um, I can present that if you want to have some additional information. You are voting on the request for the variance tonight. This would just be setting the public hearing if you want to take that step. Well, I think I'd like that, but I might also want to know about all his amount of violations he's had here within the city as well before I would uh, vote. And I mean, it doesn't have a history of being in compliance or even if he's had taken care of all his fees or... I'd like to know if he's soundproofed his building or if he's he trying to, you know... I think this would be an, excuse me, I think this would be an outdoor competition mm -hmm. and so the sound would be heard by a lot of people. One item I'd like to see if we do set the public hearing uh, properly, you know, I know normally we do the 500 feet, I'd like to go out just a little further because the complaints well, that one, were yeah, 500 feet wouldn't do much. It, it's not much it's <laughs> not really going to anybody i don't know if that reaches the railroad track 500 13, 500 feet is letters going out yeah the 500 feet is in city code okay okay but we can go beyond that we can go beyond that yeah we can expand yes that's the minimum yeah. i think you want, want if you want, want to prove it or not i mean if you want to um give additional people notice you could expand upon right. it but that's the minimum that you now have to do is it my understanding he's going to hold this show at 1218 north front street is that mm -hmm. the show because i thought last year maybe he held something at the fairgrounds no this was or same was location same location mm -hmm. maybe i'm thinking the year before yeah i think <coughs> we i think we scoped out the at least i scoped out the distance just on google maps and i think the complaints were coming in in that 1300 feet from residential area mm -hmm. 500 feet around this particular site does not incorporate one residential unit really it's all commercial industrial and in all likelihood are not going to be anybody there mm -hmm. it's <coughs> it's a 1300 feet it's uh across the railroad tracks you know into the residential area we don't have to schedule a public hearing we can deny it right and yeah. not allowed point blank no. I think you you could, um, I guess, if if you wanted more information, it would be an opportunity to at least give him a chance to come forward and, and present whatever he wanted, as we've done with, I think, other applicants in the past. Uh, I do note that apparently the public <coughs> hearing would only be four days before the event. Yeah, I was going to say. It which doesn't give him a whole lot of time if um, the variance is denied. Mm -hmm. But that's his scheduling. I mean, he could have brought, brought it in earlier, too. Hmm. What do you wish? I guess I'd support. I'll offer a motion to schedule a public hearing for Tuesday, September 4th, 2018 at 4.30 p.m. for a request for noise variance to allow amplified music during the Midwest, SPL, and... DB drag show on Saturday, September 8th, 2018, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Second. Just how far out should notices go? Oh. 500 feet, 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet. <laughs> <laughs> All over time. Five miles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, we can spend a lot of money on notices. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I on, guess we don't know where we're going to go. On the plus away. side, 180 degrees of the circle is going to be in the Minnesota River. So and there's nobody right. living there. <laughs> so you're really only talking about 180 degrees on, yeah. on the on the street side. Uh, then you got a lot of businesses besides. So you're just getting across the tracks. Yeah, you're about getting across the tracks about one or two houses, and so it, it's going to you know increase the number of uh, property owners. But if you're looking at residential feet, you know fifty. If you wanted residential input, you'd probably be out 1,500 feet to, to capture. So would that be your recommendation is the 1,500 feet no probably? Recommendation. This is no a recommendation. This is a policy issue. <laughs> I'll be the bad person. I'd like to see the 1,500 feet because we took phone calls each time he's held an event with mm -hmm. loud yeah. noise. Yeah. Yeah. At least the people are aware of it. Well, and they're going to be affected by it. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, at least they'll It's their, it's their Saturday on. afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's in the motion at 1500 i will include in my motion up to 1500 feet to go out for public notice second we have a motion and a second any more discussion 
Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Polls no. No. Motion. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? No. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Good job. Let's put them on notice. Item 6K. Uh, item 6K we're going to put off to a later date. We're going to, it's a, consider a motion to request a closed session. We re all received before the meeting tonight uh, a notice from Roger, our city attorney, that he has met with Brian Grummans and uh, Brian Grummans offered uh, a letter of resignation separation agreement effective January or December 31st 2018 and we need to uh, talk about the separation agreement. We don't have to do it tonight. You all have it. You can read it. And then do it at a later date or whatever your wishes are. We cannot act on it tonight anyway because it's not part of the agenda. So we'd have to put it on the agenda for the next meeting and then at that time go through it. And then between now and then we can look to the agreement, separation agreement. I would put it on the agenda just so that everybody knows where we're moving forward or uh, or Brian's behalf and the city council's behalf. Yeah. All right. I don't think we need a motion to that effect, do we? No. It's just no. that we will put it on the next agenda and yep. go from there. So, but no more business. Meeting adjourned. I guess.